Gotta Love Linda on today, our second sensational Sunday. Yes, I finally came up with a name for my Sunday videos. And um, yeah, I finally decided on sensational Sunday because I think Jesus is pretty sensational and can do sensational things in your life. So there you go. Um, also had a hair color change. It's a lot brighter, but you can't really tell unless I shine the light on it. Look at that. Ooh, very red. I love it. Anyway, um, my brother always tells me when it's time to color my hair again because all the, the grays come through. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. He's like, hmm, Linda, uh, I think you've got to do your hair again. I'm like, oh, okay. So I went brighter red today. Anyway, getting back to the topic. Today, we're actually going to talk about who is God. Last week, we talked about who is Jesus, and I focused on him first, even though sort of he comes second in the, the Trinity. Um, but I focused on him because he's the one that sacrificed his life for us, and, you know, he's the one that, that yeah, just did the great big thing and saved us. But today... I really want to focus on God and who he is. So let's start. Um, who God is. I. This is what I believe and this is as Christians what we believe. So God is omnipresent, which I think is, I think that means he's everywhere. He can also hear in people's thoughts, minds. He can read minds, I guess is one way you could say it. Um, he's every, I said that <laughs> he's everywhere. Yeah. Um, God is, we believe as Christians, the creator of this world, this universe, pretty much everything that you have heard or seen, God made it. So the first few, two, I think the first two or three chapters in the very first book of the Bible called Genesis is basically the creation story and how he created it in seven days or six because he actually rested on the seventh day. Um, and so if you want to read that, yeah, it's at the very, very beginning of the Bible. You just go open it up and smack bang, there it is. And so people, you know, either t generally believe in either the Big Bang Theory, which is an evolutionary thing, or the creation story and I've been seeing some videos on YouTube where um, these evangelists or people who try to convert people to Christianity they're out there and they ask do you believe in the Big Bang or in God and people will often say I believe in the Big Bang and they they ask well who created the Big Bang and they they can't actually answer that and I think that's because the only answer is God and they don't really want to believe that he did that. Um, God is somebody who has his own timeline. So I don't know if timeline is the right word, but he does not, like for us, time runs in hours and minutes, days, weeks, months, years, etc. But for God... A lifetime of years, like 70, 80 years, some, the span of somebody's life to him can be as fast as a second is to us. God actually doesn't have a time. Like time, it's really hard to explain, but time doesn't move the same way for him as it does for us. Like he had, he was, he's always just been there. No one created him. No one, there was, before God, there wasn't, there wasn't anything because God was always there, which is something that's really hard to comprehend and really hard to fathom, I think, as humans, because for us, everything has a beginning and an end. And when you stop to think about, well, how did, um, how did he come into being? And to think that he was just always there is... It's really hard to fathom that, isn't it? Don't you think? And so, um, yeah, and, and then when you think of the other end of the spectrum where 
where we'll have eternal life, like eternal. That means never ending. That means it will just go on and on and on and it will be lovely and beautiful if we go to heaven. And I just think even that is really hard to comprehend because to have no end, like, I don't know. It kind of does my head in when you think about it. Because as humans, we always have a beginning and an end. So that's something that's extremely unique about God is that he doesn't have a beginning and an end. And so um, when he sent his son Jesus to earth, well, he lived uh, the life of a human. So he was born. He actually, well, God somehow conceived him in Mary's womb. And, you know, he was he had that period in her womb where she was pregnant and then he lived the life of a person and then again of course died at 33 so in human form Jesus had life the way we look at life but Jesus is still God if you remember last week I talked about how God is Trinity so God is made up of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit However, they are all still one person, just like an apple has the peel, the flesh and the core. They're all one apple, but they're three different things or ice and water and steam. They're all one th different thing individually, but they're all one and the same substance. So they're the only examples that I really have to explain what the Trinity is and how they can be all one person and yet three different people <laughs> um, at the same time. It's another one of those mysteries that sometimes I think when we get to heaven, we're just going to have so many questions to ask God, like, how does this actually work? <laughs> so um, there, God has lots of names. I think the name that he actually gave himself is the great I am. So I space A M. Oh, I'm writing that, but it's backwards. So it's I space A M. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, there's songs about the great I am and and um yeah, he's also known as Yahweh, which is I think Hebrew. There's, you hear a lot of people call him the great Jehovah. Um, there are so many names. I should have even talked about the names that Jesus had because he's got, I think, even more names. He's got Emmanuel, um, Prince of Peace, Jesus, obviously. Um, might have to cover names another time, I think, because there are just so many names that we can call these guys. But, but basically God is... We often or mostly refer him maybe to um, the father. So we know that he is a man or well, male if, I guess, he has a sex, a gender, I should say, whatever. Um, he's definitely male because he made, he, he says he made man in his image. So he wouldn't, make, wouldn't have made Adam without... Like, he wouldn't have given him the boy beards if he wasn't male himself. So, um, we definitely know that God is a male and the fact that people say he's a woman, that's just false. That's totally untrue. And those that say he's a woman or he's a she or, you know, it's pretty much blaspheming against God. And blaspheming is really almost like swearing against him, saying horrible things about him, just stuff that's really sacrilegious and irrespectful. And God is, he's majestic. I was going to say majesty. He's majestic. He's huge. He's, he's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. They're names that he's often called. And um, so... Actually, one really cool thing is that my brother goes to a men's ministry and there they teach them that, you know, you're the son of the king, which means that you're a prince, which is such a wonderful thing when you think about it, to be called God's son, God's kids, you know, which means that like that would make me a princess, which is really cool because we belong to him and he is our father. And, 
You know, some people have issues with God being a father figure for them because they've maybe had fathers in human, like as their, their biological father or foster father or stepfather or whatever, adopt, adoptive father. And they have not been all that great. They have not been what a father should be. And so I think a lot of people make the mistake with God, the almighty, amazing creator of this universe father they they think that he's going to be like their their human fathers and let them down but god is probably the most well he's not probably he is the most reliable father that you will ever have he can be kind and gentle and he he has such a heart for people he weeps when we're when we're upset He's very wounded in his heart when we're going through trials and and stuff. Um, so he has a real soft heart. But you know what? He's also a judge. And so that means that he can be very stern and angry and he can judge. He does judge people. It's like um, in the Old Testament, I think it's in Genesis, um, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were so filled with blasphemous acts that, you know, things that go completely against what God has created us to be. Um, relationships with same sexes, prostitution, drinking, like excessive drinking. Um, who knows what else went on there? We don't really know. But he was so angry and he judged them. And the way that he judged them, he pretty much, you know, the whole fire and brimstone thing, that's what happened to them. Just gone. Gone ski. They just, those cities were destroyed because of just how immoral they were and, yeah, how evil they had become. And to be honest, I really feel like... Um, the world these days is heading very much in the same direction as, as those cities back way thousands of years ago. 6,000 years ago, they reckon, approximately, that the Bible, you know, Genesis began. So, yeah, I might have to do a video on, you know, things about evolution and how where God fits into all that. And, and now my cat wants to say something. <laughs> Um, so yeah, God is the kind of father who will never let you down. He will always be there. He will listen. He will, you know, judge. Yes. But sometimes we need that judgment. Sometimes we need someone to pull us into place. You know, he gives us that accountability and I don't know. He's just majestic. And if you ever get the chance to just worship him, even if you're on your own out in nature, Look at everything that you're looking at, the water, the flowers, the, the grass, the trees, like he made all of that. And there is not one person on this earth who can create life out of nothing. People can clone, people can, you know, um, you know, grow synthetic stuff, but none of that actually has life. And you think of like nothing, like you have your hands here. There is nothing in them. God can actually make something grow on your hand if he wanted. A plant, a root, a sprig of leaf or whatever. It can just grow there. And there is not a person on this earth or anywhere in this universe who can do that. And I just think of the power that he must have. Like, it's, again, incomprehensible. No, is that the right word? It's unfathomable. <laughs> I'll just keep going back to that word because it is. It's really hard to fathom how out of absolutely nothing he can just make things. So God also um, created a lot of covenants with people in the Old Testament. He also focused on law and how people should live and um 
so at the moment I'm going through reading through the Bible chronologically because the Bible was written um, not in the order that everything happened. So I'm going through a Bible reading plan on one of my Bible apps where it actually goes through the whole Bible but in the order that each thing happened. And at the moment I'm in one of the very first books of the Bible, Leviticus, and it's actually going through all the old Jewish law because I'm going to explain the Bible in a different video. But in um, Jewish times, way back before Jesus came, um, God's followers were actually Jewish. And um, <laughs> he, um, he gave them laws on how to live, how to worship, how to pretty much do everything and a lot of those laws are still in practice today some of them may have been changed because when Jesus came he brought grace which is another video um but yeah God created all the laws and um the new te the, not the new testament the ten commandments from God they uh I guess I've heard some people call them the moral law so they're, they're things that everybody knows not to do, even though obviously as humans we sin and therefore we break his Ten Commandments all the time. But they were given to Moses by God um, up on Mount Sinai. Um, oh, there was something else I wanted to say and I forgot. I might have to look at my notes. Oh, that's right. One of the um, things I did want to just briefly talk about was the covenants. So a covenant is like a promise um, that God made with certain people or with a nation or with the whole world. And a couple of the big ones, um, actually, I'm going to just pause you for a sec because I actually did an art journal page on covenants that God made with us. So I'm just going to go check it, get it. So this here is one of my art journals. I'm very crafty and I've got lots and lots of bits and pieces and all sorts in here. But let me try and find the covenant page um, that I made because I really like it just because it is totally about God's covenants that he's made with us. Whoops. So, and you can see there I've written the word covenant. And then all of these bits of writing are different covenants that he has actually made with us. So I'm just going to read out a couple. Um, so God's promises are forever, are fulfilled, mean love, are a gift of grace, are prophetic. He, his promises means Jesus on a cross. For us and are for all who believe what else have I got here a covenant or promise sorry can't see it properly without with my glasses on it's a solemn agreement between members of the church to act together in harmony with the gospel so the gospel is Jesus dying for us and then rising again it's an expression of assurance on which expectation is based. God made promises to us in scripture. The biggest is grace. Oh, there's another one over here. Oh, that's not much. That's just doodles. So a couple of the, um, some of the, oh, okay. So what I've done, I have written some covenants here and they've got different names, I guess. So there's the Noah covenant and that's when he sent, God sent the flood that covered the whole earth and then when the waters went away and Noah was able to come out of the ark, he, God sent a rainbow, a rainbow and that was his promise that he will never flood the earth again, like not the entire earth. I mean, yeah, we have floods, but it's never a worldwide global flood. And so that's why every time it rains, as, the, um, as it kind of, you know, dissipates, the rainbow will always appear. And that is in order to remind us that God's never going to 
um, he's never going to do that again. So that's the Noah covenant. There's the Abraham covenant. I'm just checking what it says. So I'm actually just going to read this bit. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham, because back then his name was Abraham, not Abraham. That was, I think, part of the whole covenant thing was God changing his name to Abraham. Um, I am your shield, your very great reward, which is who God is. The word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took Abraham outside and said, look, look up in the sky and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, so shall your offspring be. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham and said to your descendants, I will give this land. So basically, he's telling Abraham, who is another, I guess what you could call one of our fathers in the Old Testament, that he would, as many stars as you can see in the sky, that's how many descendants that Abraham would have. And you know what? It happened. Another one that they say, I think it's in the Bible somewhere, is that as, as many grains of sand there are on the earth, that's how many descendants that Abraham would have. Um, the Davidic covenant, so the da Davidic means David. So King David was a, a big, um, major player in the Old Testament. Major player, that sounds bad because he wasn't a player. But he was a very notable, very big person in, in the Old Testament. Um... And so God said, now then, my, tell my servant David, I will make your name great and I will provide a place for my people. I will raise up your offspring to succeed you. I will be his father and he will be my son. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever. So that was in Samuel, 2 Samuel. And... Um, that was, yeah, basically just promising that Jesus was going to come and he was of David's, like, line. So, you know, like family trees. Um, Jesus comes from David's family tree. And there is another covenant, the New Covenant. And um, this one is actually in the New Testament and it's from Jesus. So I'm just going to read it to you because even though it's about Jesus we're talking about God and covenants and this all kind of fits together. For it is by grace you have been saved. But now in Jesus Christ, you have been brought near to the blood of Jesus. Oh, maybe I've written that wrong. You have been brought, bought through the blood of Jesus for he is our peace and he reconciled us to God. So that's in Ephesians 2, which is in the New Testament. And um, so basically God, he made a lot more covenants than that in the Bible, um, but they're like some big ones. And they're just promises of goodness and love and him wanting us to live full and wonderful, grace-filled lives and lives that serve him and honour him and respect him and... Yeah, like I know I haven't talked heaps and heaps and heaps about all different parts of God's nature and who he is, but I think these are kind of the important things that I wanted to share with you. So he's our father. He's our creator. He is the king of kings. He, there is no one better or bigger or, or brighter than him. He is the man. <laughs> and... um. Through him, we just have life because he gave us his son, Jesus, who technically is also God. Anyway, um, and then apart from that, he is also a judge and the lawmaker. So he does create laws or he did create laws that, you know, some of them we might not follow now. Yeah. 
I was going to say some of them we might not follow now because they were Old Testament laws and we're living in like a New Testament times. But so some of them, like the way a, a, a pastor should dress is maybe not really current for today, but um, pretty much everything else, you know, just some of those kinds of things in Leviticus, the book of Leviticus, might not be quite relevant today. But the beauty about the Bible and what God shared way back then is that it's always going to be relevant. Everything, everything in it has relevance to our lives. We just have to ask God to show us the way that it's relevant for us and just don't twist what his Bible says, you know, don't twist his words and, and mix them up and because he gave them to us in his, in its purest form and we just need to ask him to help us understand the exact message that he's trying to tell us through the Bible. So um, that's going to be enough for tonight because I'm really tired. I've had a huge weekend and um, next week I'm going to talk about who the Holy Spirit is. He's a bit of a controversial character for some people, um, but he's still part of who God is and he makes up the Trinity or the triune God and he's pretty amazing and, yeah, don't miss that one. It'll be interesting and hopefully I'll keep it shorter. All right, guys, I really hope you have a wonderful week and actually, you know what? I'm going to pray. So... Dear Lord God, just as we go into this week, I just pray that anyone who gets to see this video and even those who don't will be really richly blessed by you and that they can come to an understanding of who you are as their father, um, that you're so unconditional in your love for each of us and that you just want the best for us and, you know, ultimately you're the one that knows what's best for us. Um, but just give people an assurance of who you are in their lives. And yeah, um, if there are any people out there who are looking for you, just direct them to the right people or the right videos on YouTube so that they can see exactly the message that you want them to see. Give us all a fantastic week. And yeah, in your name we pray. Amen. So have a wonderful week and I will see you next Sunday for our third Sensational Sunday. I'm so excited I've got a name. All right, um, see you later.